Like most types of functions, there is a parent square root function, the simplest version of a square root function y equals the square root of x. This is the equation. And here is the graph of that function. It starts at the origin and has the slope gradually falling as x gets bigger. The graph of the square root function y equals the square root of x is really just the graph of a parabola of the parent function y equals x squared, then rotated clockwise 90 degrees, then cut in half. The square root function is really an inverse function of the quadratic function y equals x squared, but the further explanation of inverse functions is a topic for another lesson. Now let's examine how the graphs change when changes are made to the parent function. We'll look at four things. A number added to or subtracted from the expression on the right side. A number added to or subtracted from inside the square root sign, sometimes called the radical. Third, a coefficient of x inside the radical. And finally, a factor outside the radical. We could also perform more than one changes at the same time. Let's look at this equation. y equals the square root of x plus 2 taking care to note that the plus 2 occurs outside the square root sign. I find that it always helps me understand more to predict what will happen first before graphing, then compare what really happens to my prediction. And here is that second equation, graph relative to the first. If we look carefully, we can see that the curve of y equals the square root of x plus 2 moves the curve upward two units. So a positive number moves the curve upward while a negative number would move the curve outward, outside the square root sign, of course. Next, we take that plus 2 inside the radical and see what happens. What would you predict? That the curve would move to the right or maybe up again? Neither. It moves over to the left. In the conics, if you remember, it was the same way. x plus a number moves the conic to the left, and x minus a number moves it to the right. Next, we'll put the 2 next to the x on the inside of the radical to see what happens. What do you think will happen? Will the curve be steeper or shallower? This curve also starts at the origin, but goes up more steeply, which should make sense since the square root of numbers gets bigger as they increase, but not at a linear rate of increase. And finally, we'll put the 2 in front of the radical sign. I predict the curve will go up even more since the increasing factor will be 2 instead of just the square root of 2 inside the radical. And here they are, graphed, starting at the same place, the origin, 0, 0, but verging farther apart again there are also combinations of numbers inside and outside the square root sign that can give variety as well. Now we'll look at some problems, and here's the first problem. Which of the following functions best represents the function graph below? The easiest way to do this problem and be sure about it is to use a graphing calculator. Here's answer A, the square root of 3x minus 6. Then we graph it. We see that it doesn't look like the graph function is anything like the original, so we cross it off. Next we enter answer B, the square root of 3x plus 6 under the square root sign. Then we graph it by pressing graph. This one looks quite a bit like the graph, starting at the same place. So we can underline it while we take a look at the other answers. And here is answer C, graphed, definitely not the right answer. And here is answer choice D, graphed, also not the right answer. We are now sure B is the correct answer and we circle it as correct. Here's another problem. Which table shows the solution to the equation 2 times the square root of quantity x plus 1 equals 6? We're given some tables to look at with x and y values, but no values in the equation. Quite confusing. We're going to solve this equation two ways. The old school way is where we work out the algebra to get x by itself. First step, divide both sides of the equation by 2. 2 over 2 cancel on the left side of the equation. We now have square root of quantity x plus 1 equals 3. The next step to solving is to undo the square root sign, and this we can do by squaring both sides of the equation. What we have left is x plus 1 equals 9. And subtracting 1 from each side of the equation, x equals 8. And where do we see x equal to 8? Right here, answer B. That would make B our answer. Another way we could solve is to go to our graphing calculator, then place the left side in y1 and the right side of the equation in y2. And from here we can graph and press second trace 5, enter, enter, enter. And we get the same solution here with the value shown at the bottom of the view screen. x equals 8, y equals 6. We can also look at the table view by pressing second, then the graph key. 
And we see the solution here as well. We've shown different ways of solving. We could also have plugged in our answers, A, B, C, or D, into the original equation and solved that way as well. Let's look at the next problem. Dolly graphed the function g of x as shown below. Which equation best represents the function that Dolly graphed? Stop the video and see if you can solve it, and then restart the video to see if you got it right. Note that there appears to be a y-intercept at about negative 5 on the graph. If you substitute 0 for x for each answer choice, you will find the right answer. That's a very easy way to do this without graphing the functions. If you have a graphing calculator, it's really easy also. Graphing is a good way to go since with algebraic functions sometimes the results can be counterintuitive or not what you would expect. Here's the function for answer A entered in y equals. And here is the graph of that function. Definitely not the right answer, so we cross it off. And here is answer choice B graphed. Also definitely not correct. And here is answer C placed in the y equals view, and here is answer C graphed, definitely the correct answer. Let's look at the next problem. Zach conducted a science experiment and recorded his data in the table below. Which function best represents his results? I know of no easier way than to enter the functions in the y equals view and then check the table view. Here is answer A entered in the y equals view. Now pressing second, then graph, gets us to the table view. This looks to be a perfect match. However, be sure when a problem looks really easy to check all the answers and reread the problem closely, especially when A is the right answer. I checked them all and the answer is A. Let's look at the next problem. Find the solution to the equation below. 2 times the square root of quantity 2x plus 6 equals 8. Stop the video and try to solve the problem, then restart the video to see how you did. There's only one thing that makes this problem any challenge at all, and that is that, that there are not multiple choice answers. Still, it's not too hard to solve. I want to go old school first, then solve by different methods in the calculator. For old school, the first step in getting x by itself is to divide both sides of the equation by 2. The next step is to cancel 2 over 2 on the left side and bring down the result, which is the square root of quantity 2x plus 6 equals 4. The next step is to square both sides to get rid of the square root sign. This simplifies to 2x plus 6 equals 16. Coming back up to the top, we need to move the 6 over to the other side where it becomes 2x equals 16 minus 6. Combining like terms, we have 2x equals 10. Then divide both sides by 2. 2 over 2 on the left, cancel. Then we have our solution, x equals 5. Now we can go to the calculator to test for x equals 5. Press 5, storage, x, then enter. Now we enter 2 times square root of quantity 2x plus 6. Press enter. We see that we come up with 8, meaning that 5 is the value of x that makes this equation a true statement. We can also solve by graphing. Enter the left side of the equation into y1 and the right side into y2. Press graph. We see the solution here where the curve intersects the line. We find the exact solution by pressing second, trace, five, enter, enter, enter. We see the solution here at x equals five, which corresponds to what we calculated earlier. I like to solve by putting the solution on the x-axis, which we can do by solving one side of the equation for zero. The equation comes to the uh, one line where we do by subtracting eight, Press graph. We see the solution, or 0, at x equals 5. We can verify by looking at the table view by going to second graph. We see the solution here at x equals 5 as well. Finally, we can bring back equation solver by pressing math, then going down to 0 for solver. Press enter. It's cleared out so we can enter the equation. If it's not cleared, we need to press the up arrow, then clear. Now we enter the left side of the equation, 2 times the square root of quantity at 2x plus 6. To solve the equation for 0, so we can use equation solver, we need to subtract 8. Now we can solve by pressing alpha enter, alpha enter. You have to remember to do it twice because just once may give you a wrong answer. We see that 5 is the correct answer in this method as well. Finally, we need to mark the answer grid properly. We place the 5 here to the left of the decimal point using our pencil. 
then we bubble in the proper little circle. We've gone over quite a few problems. I hope this has helped. This has been Graphing Square Root Functions. Thanks for viewing.